Hey there. In our last video, we put together a basic foundation for what our GUI will look like and proved that we could load files into our scripts without using the command line. This time, we're going to take that foundation and finish the GUI so that we end up with a tool that allows us to merge two PDFs together and save them as a new file. So let's get started by making a new script that we can call basic GUI, whoops, uh, merger, or basic merger GUI, how about that? And we'll go to our code from the last video, and we'll just copy and paste all of that into here. So the first thing we want to do is add that second row. So I can go ahead and just copy all those elements, and now we'll just make sure that everything refers to the second row. I'm sure this is very exciting to watch, but there's a good chance I'll forget one of these ones and we'll break the code. And all of our variables and functions, we want to make sure that we are referring to a second set. So we're going to go through and just make a second set of everything. Which you're probably noticing that we're duplicating a lot of code, and we are. So in the next video, we'll clean this all up. But for now, we just want to get something quickly that works. So that should cover all the elements there. Now we just need to add a second set of these variables. OK, save this. And we should be able to run this and see if it works. Oh, oh boy. Uh, oh, load two is not defined. We'll copy and, well actually before we copy this, our load one script, let's just make sure that this PDF is one. This variable is inside the scope of this function, so this really isn't going to change anything, but it'll help just keep things separated in our mind as we're putting this together. It's not going to end up like this because right now we're basically just writing our entire script twice which we don't want to do. And let's just make all of these ones twos. Just like that. And I don't think I forgot any. So let's see if we can run this. OK, perfect. So we've got the full, um, basically our full GUI here, which looks about right, except for one thing. I want to move these labels over. And uh, we should be good to add the rest of our code here. So before we do that, let me just fix these. Um, these columns should be two like that. Let's try that again. Okay, yeah, that looks right. Okay, so since we'll be working with two different PDFs now, what we'll actually use to write is a list of PDF objects. So let's just call this something like PDF list, and we'll just make this an empty list for now. And as we load PDFs, we're going to append them to this list so that we can work with them later. And an easy way to do this is to just, we're just going to make a class that we'll call something like PDF doc, something like that. And this will be a pretty simple class. The only function we're going to have is its, I guess, constructor function that's like in it. So just make sure you do two underscores in it and two underscores. And our arguments or parameters will be self and file name, just like that. So we're going to want to have that file name, which will equal file name. Oops. And then we'll have a display name also. So this could be file name dot split like we did. And then we'll just take that last piece. No, wait, whoops. Get that outside of there. We'll make a PDF property here 
which will just be load PDF. So this will be our PDF file reader from PyPDF2. Like that. Our number of pages, we can now oops, just call get num pages on that object now that we've made it. And we'll have a start and an end page property, which now we know how many pages we can set our default right there. So just like that. Now that we have this class, we can change our load1 and load2 um, functions here. So now we're still going to want to add that file name and set that equal to this. But now we can say that PDF1 equals a PDF doc with F1 as its, I guess, parameter. So now, whoops, if we set file name 1, we want to set this equal to PDF1.display. Pages 1, we can now set to PDF1.pages. Start one, we can set to pdf1.start, and end one, we can set to pdf1.end. Finally, we can go ahead and that list that we made, we can append pdf1 to that, and then we'll be able to access it later. So let's get rid of all this. And like before, let's just copy and paste all of this stuff into load2, which try to keep the same formatting so that things look the same. And you're probably already getting some ideas on where we can cut down on some of this uh, duplication. And once we're here, um, we can save this, and let's just try to run it and see where we end up if we try to add two PDFs. So let's add document one to the first part. Okay, that seems to work. That's a good sign. And we'll add document two to the second, and that's three pages. Okay, so as far as I can see right now, this looks like it's working. The save PDF button doesn't do anything yet, so let's make that do something. Here we're gonna hop back to our command line Urger, and we're going to take this add to writer function because we're going to use this again. And let's just copy and paste that and we'll put it right after load PDF. That looks like a good spot. And now we can go down to save PDF and actually put in a function here. So, like we did before, we're going to create a writer object from PyPDF2. Whoops. call that writer. We still need an output file name, which we can use that tkinter file dialog, um, which just ask save as file name, which I forgot that there. And we'll set our file types equal to the same thing we had before so that we have a PDF file, which will be a star.pdf, and then in all files, which will be a star.star. .star. And with that, we can make our output file, which will just open something with output file name, and we're going to write binary again. Now we can go add to writer. And since we have that list now of PDFs that we've added, we can go ahead and add the two uh, right here. So we call the first one for our first 
file, the first index or zeroth index, and we want to pull the PDF because we want to have that PDF file reader object passed in here. We want the writer, and then we want to convert what's in the entry box to an integer, just like that. And the same with the end. So we're not really using our properties for our start page and end page here. So technically the way this is written, we don't actually need them, uh, but in the next video we'll use them. So let's just use this as it is. Set this up to be one for the second item in there, and we'll just change these guys to twos. So now that we've added all of our pages to our writer, we can take writer, oops, we can write, to our output file, take our output file, close it, and then this will be a little new, but we do root.quit, call the quit function, and that'll just close our window up. So now, if I've done this correctly, um, this should work. Okay, so let's try to run this and see what we get. Okay, so this looks good should be able to add our document. Let's add our second document. And let's only grab the second pages from each of these, like that. Uh, oh, looks like we're in a different directory. Uh, we should be on a desktop. Well, no, I want this guy. And let's just call this second pages.pdf. We're able to save this as a PDF file, so that looks great. We have the right uh, default file type. And let's click Save and see what we get. OK, that's a good sign. It turned into a PDF. Let's see if we have the second pages here. OK, page two and page two. So there you go. Uh, you can see the limitations. We've got, with all of our duplication and the way we've written this, um, if we wanted to merge, say, a third PDF at once, uh, we would have to copy and paste all of this all over again. And we don't want to do that. So in the next video, we're going to make this very flexible. We're going to use this class that we've made and the way we're using this on a list and um, make a GUI that will be able to handle uh, any number of PDFs that we'd like to add uh, together and just make this look a lot nicer. So thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, look forward to the next one.